1961, before that surgery performed by robots. It must be tomorrow's world. Tomorrow's world, tonight a world first. How would you like to be operated on by a robot? In a London operating theatre, the doctors are standing back and allowing a machine to do the work. For the very first time, a robot is wielding the knife and performing surgery on a human being. But next, the image of robots performing surgery on humans is so futuristic that it appears every week in the opening titles the vision of the future is really happening. A unique operation on the prostate gland is being performed by a robotic surgeon. James Younger reports on this world first. This team of surgeons from Guy's Hospital and engineers from London's Imperial College are making the final adjustments to the machine at the center of a radically new form of medicine, robot surgery. This is the first robot in the world that's capable of surgically removing tissue from the human body. In a few moments, it's gonna perform a highly skilled operation, completely unaided. The surgery is to correct a problem that plagues the lives of millions of older men, enlargement of the prostate gland, the gland lies down below the bladder. When it swells up, it presses on the tube delivering urine from the bladder, which makes it difficult to urinate. Sufferers constantly have the urge to use the toilet, but when they get there, they just can't go. Each year in Britain, about 40,000 men undergo a fairly standard operation to clear the blockage. But today the operation is anything but standard. It will be performed not by humans, but by the world's first robotic surgeon. Albert Friend is one of its first patients. This operation can be easily adapted for a robot to do it because um, it requires constant mechanical repetitive actions and uh, one of the main functions of a robot is to repeat your actions again and again accurately and more precisely than the human hand. This incredible piece of machinery is capable without human help of removing lumps of tissue from the prostate gland. Its automatic arm will travel right down the center of the penis to reach its target. And the robot won't use anything as crude as a knife to cut through the gland. Instead, it will use an ingenious new device, a minute electric roller which will vaporize the prostate gland's tissue. The robotic surgeon is now almost ready to start removing part of Albert's prostate gland. But before it's left to operate on its own, its human helper has got to tell it where to cut. By using an ultrasound probe, the human surgeon is able to see exactly how enlarged the prostate has become. You can just see it on this screen. It's the dark grey area around the center. To give the robot its instructions, all the surgeon has to do is mark the areas causing the blockage. The robot now has a precise three-dimensional model of the tissue that has to be removed. Now the human surgeon has given the robot all the data it needs. It's time for him to step aside and the machine to take over. The robot arm is now inserted and you can see on the robot's camera just how enlarged Albert's prostate is, severely restricting the opening to his bladder. And now the final command to give the robot complete control. As it starts work, the robot's electric roller moves towards the prostate. 
The roll is so hot that it vaporizes the enlarged tissue. While it's all go for the robot, there's nothing left for the human surgeons to do but watch. It felt strange that no one in the theater seemed to be doing anything. Well, I'm carefully monitoring the situation, making sure that it's doing the right thing. And uh, uh, physically, I'm not doing anything. The robot is uh, doing the operation at the moment. Gradually, the path to the bladder opens up as the robot follows its pre-programmed path of destruction, each step charted on an ultrasound map. After 20 minutes of burning away tissue, the prostate gland is a gaping black hole. Entirely without human help, the robot has managed to remove the enlarged parts of Albert's prostate. The robotic surgeon has performed so well that the doctors here hope it could shorten the ever-increasing cues for this operation. At the moment, in this country, there are about 2.75 million patients waiting for prostate operations. Currently, we are doing about 42,000 patients a year, including the private sector, which uh, would approximately take us 40 years to do it if you keep doing the conventional operation. So definitely, we need an alternative. And uh, uh, one alternative that we are investigating to see if it's suitable would be the robotic operation. Another successful day's work for the robotic surgeon. Within a week of leaving hospital, Albert was able to return to normal life. Everyone here at Guy's is convinced that if the robot keeps doing its job this well, then this is the future. And in all likelihood, similar robots will be designed for other operations involving difficult or repetitive actions, like brain or even eye surgery. It remains to be seen, though, whether patients will be so convinced. For even if the technology proves itself beyond doubt, the success of the robot surgeon will depend, in the end, on the willingness of people to put their lives in its hands. Extraordinary.